So one morning I had this idea to add a wobbly underwater effect in my indie game so uh, I decided to boot up my paint program and started animating away and this is what I ended up with Coolio mockup and uh, after I decided that it was cool I started implementing it in game and this is what the first attempt of uh, the implementation looked like and I can say that it looks pretty cool uh, with the whole terrain changing color after being submerged underwater and I decided to showcase this uh, on Discord and got quite a few feedback. Uh, one person pointed out that uh, I could change the color of Frago when underwater, which uh, I totally agree. Uh, I mean, it's kind of weird that the terrain changes the water, but Frago didn't. I and mean, the other person pointed out that uh, it feels weird that the water should be uh, smoother, which I completely agree, because when I first posted it, I wasn't so sure about the effect because it is using a frame stone animation and then I decided to use 16 frames which uses a lot more memory since I'm making this using caching in instead of using a shader so this is what I ended up with uh, in my second attempt as you can see I made it a lot more fluent as well as changing the hue of the terrain underwater because I want it to be more visible at this point I'm still uh, rather not sure about this effect in terms of whether I want it to affect the foreground and whether this effect should be like this fluent, like this smooth with 16 frames. Because when you think about it, this if I were to make a water level, this effect would basically cover the whole screen, which I'm afraid it would be kind of like the touch fuzzy get dizzy effect from Yoshi's Island, but uh, to a lesser degree, but I'm still kind of afraid that it would become a problem. So I decided to make my uh, final compromise, which is only use this effect in the background and doesn't affect the foreground. And I'm very happy with this final change, because if I do things like this, I get to use like varying water levels, which is pretty cool for level design. And also, I get to get away with less frames in the animation frames, because only the background is using this effect, which isn't the focus point of the gameplay. And I gotta say, I'm very proud of this final result and I cannot wait to make an entire level out of this. Now someone has asked why I don't just use a shader and instead why I use caching. And that's because caching is just how I handle animated tiles in the game. And I don't have to add any more things, too many more things to it. And if I were to use shader in this scenario, uh, it would be really uh, weird because this game wasn't entirely made to use sh shaders so if I were to implement it in the middle of the development it would be kind of bumpy like I had to take an entire discourse to string everything together to make this entire thing work just to see if this effect is even good looking in the first place and that's why I decided to use caching so please would you stop giving me the full shader tutorial rundown under my discord showcase thanks anyway I'm very happy with this effect uh, let me know what you think in the comments and i'll see you next time uh, probably next year because it's exam week <laughs> again